Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, we did promise the people of Kenya that uh, we are going to issue a statement on the way forward after the swearing-in. This press statement today is not that statement. The statement is going to be issued tomorrow. So I want that just for, for clarity to be known that we are going to issue a comprehensive press statement through our technical team as the way forward following the flooding in on Tuesday the 30th of January of February. Or January, sorry. But ladies and gentlemen, look at this. The attack on the media, the arbitrary arrest of individuals, intimidation of the judiciary, divide and rule tactics. Kanu is back. Kanu is back, the force, uh, in, in, and by a new name that we must fight. We fought for a long time to give this country a new constitution in 2010. That new constitution, together with all the freedoms that it entails, is under serious attack right now. They say that those who the gods want to kill you first make them mad. You can see that the Jubilee regime is certainly mad. How else do you explain what has happened to the media fraternity in this country from Monday up to today? That a minister can wake up and say the media disobeyed the order and as a result of that they are being punished Investigations are being carried out, and while the investigations are ongoing, the media will be off air, as if the government owns the media. So that means that the government has completely suspended the operations of our constitution right now. Yet they have not gone to parliament to get a permission to declare a state of emergency. Who has given Mr. Matiangi those powers which he is pretending to be exercising? Either we are living under this constitution or we don't and we can go each one of us our own different ways. We can go different ways and there's no need to have a government. If the government itself is going to disobey, violate its own laws and the constitution. We did on the other Friday produce detailed account of how Kenyans voted on the 8th of August. I can swear by the Bible that what we gave are the authentic results of elections of 8th of August. It took time to get that information. But that is the authentic uh, uh, information how Kenyan voted. And it shows clearly that we won those elections. And Jubilee lost. So we are not going to accept to be dictated by Jubilee, whom we beat in an election. What they did was to force the IBC to declare fraudulent election the results. Therefore, I can speak without fear of contradiction. That's why I'm speaking with a lot of energy and conviction that I won the elections this pair on the 8th of August. And that's the reason why I was able to stand between that huge multitude of Kenyans and hold the Bible. I'm doing it not because I'm mad. I'm not a magromaniac. I'm a very reasonable Kenyan. 
And I'm talking out of conviction that I won elections. And every Kenyan knows that majority of Kenyans did not vote on the 26th of October. The few who voted are known. They know themselves. But you have challenged the IBC not to go and buy one page in the newspapers to say, oh, so many people access our records here and there. You have told IBC, just as you have done with the result of 26th of October, open the servers of 8th of August, show Kenyans, contradict that information, produce the same logs like you have produced to convince Kenyans that what you are saying is correct. You are a public institution. So you have a responsibility to provide the information. Freedom of information is a right enshrined in our constitution. We must move on. Jubilee is now arresting people, taking them to court to charge them. They're threatening people with treason or whatever, all these kind of things. We want Jubilee to accept that they lost the elections. And we are going to show you the way forward, how we are going to move to, to, uh, until the end uh, tomorrow. So that day was a day of swearing in. And I have these, my colleagues here with me. First, I want to say poorly to my brother, Stephen Calonzo, for the attack which was done in his compound against his family. My brother here has got a sick wife who is ambulant in the house. Imagine the kind of shock that such a person will receive when uh, a grenade is thrown into the compound and uh, bullets are fired in the compound. The police have said that they are on the track to get these people. Then they know them. If the police spokesman says that they have identified these people, they know them. They must also have known where they came from. Let it not be like that of, of Jacob Juma or Musandu, where you keep on telling Kenyans, oh, we are going to leave no stones unturned, and the stones are still unturned two years later, in the case of Jacob Juma. We are going to remain together as NASA, as you can see us here. We are here as NASA, and the so-called division in NASA, which is the media, is an invention of the media. I did say that day to the public that these three gentlemen were not there, and that they're going to explain to the people why they were not there. That was the purpose of this press conference, which they have explained why they were not there on that particular day. But I also said that we are together in spite of themselves not being there on that day, and also say that Kalonzo will take an oath at a different time. So I confirm what I said on that particular day, that that is the situation as it is, and that the war is not intra nas The enemy is known to all our people, and that is where all our guns should be trained towards. We shall remain united. And as I've said, tomorrow we'll receive a more comprehensive statement. Thank you very much. Sir. So.